Hey guys, what is going on? It is a very windy afternoon, but it has actually been about a week after Hurricane Ian has hit Florida. And to start out, my heart goes out to everyone on the west coast of Florida or anywhere that was affected by this hurricane because it really did a lot of destruction. We were lucky where we live, nothing happened to this area down on the east coast, southeast coast of Florida but you know, it was really bad for a lot of people in Florida. But one thing that happens when a hurricane comes is it messes with the barometric pressure of the ocean. And a lot of times it makes the lobsters walk. I haven't seen a lobster walk since I think I've even been doing YouTube. Um, that's why I've never made a video about it. But right now the lobsters are walking. And as you can see, we're pretty close to the beach. And my dad and my two brothers, Jen Fisher, are in the water currently and they are following the lobsters. They are walking in lines, groups of lobsters. I don't know why they do this. They just get kind of messed up from barometric pressure. It had been rough for almost, I don't know, a solid week. There's been a giant swell and these lobsters are walking. So it doesn't always happen. They're pretty hard to find, but they're catching them. I see Jed already got one and my dad's in the water with a bag. So they're catching them, putting them in the bag. I've been lobstering basically my entire life since I could swim and my dad's been lobstering since he was like 12 or something years old and I've probably only experienced maybe five lobster walks or something like that but every time it happens it's incredible. It just is so cool to see those lines of lobsters just walking across the bottom in really shallow water. So I'm going to get my gear on, jump in the water, Victor's going to stay in the boat but it is really not clear, so hopefully I can get some of this footage for you guys underwater because you can't see the bottom. It is not very clear. But that's the conditions that you're gonna have when these lobsters are walking because I think they're doing it just because they know that they can get away with it in really murky water where they kind of feel protected. If you guys have ever seen any of my lobster videos before, you know I make these handmade nets and this is the perfect thing to use for a lobster walk because they're just out in the open they can't even see it, especially in this murky water, and you can just net them all day long. FloridaLobsterNets.com. Now let's get in and let's catch them. I saw one big one, but I tried to get a good one. We'll see if it's legal. Fisher got the biggest one of the batch, you think? Uh, I think so. If you don't have to measure that. The one. hard part is once you see them, it's so murky. You gotta get them right then there, or else you lose them because these guys are moving fast. He's legal. Like if you're not diving down constantly, you can miss them because there's 
moving so fast compared to you in the current. I'm driving the boat and they're in the water trying to communicate and all I hear them saying is I got one over here I got one over here but the water is so murky that as soon as they come back up I can hear them saying that I lost it a lot of the time we've drifted a good mile the current is raging the wind is blowing the water is murky so if you see them, I feel like the only time they get them is when they're actually down there and they spot them so I don't know how the footage is gonna come out that Brooke is filming on the GoPro but hopefully it it's decent for you guys So I'm going to the beach to pick up the bag that Brian's holding. They've been putting lobster in. Empty it out and then bring it back and then count them please. Okay. But I'm gonna get out of here. Before. That's fine. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Alright, so they just gave me the bag and I counted them in the cooler. Because I guess it's really hard to keep track between all of them and the water's so murky you just can't really think straight. But 
There's 22 Florida lobster right there. And as they're in the water, I can hear, hear them saying, oh, these are a bunch of shorts. Um, these are no good. So they're not finding all keepers. So I guess there's a bunch of shorts down there with them, but I'm excited to see this footage since I can't be down there with them. <laughs> what do you guys think? This is my favorite. I love it. It's nauseating the way the bottom keeps moving, but it's the most awesome dive in the world. You cannot see the bottom from the surface, so when you dive down, it's just creepy. And it does make you feel a little like disoriented, so you kind of feel a little bit almost like seasick, like trying to swim down to a bottom that you can't see. So it's kind of a little bit of a weird sensation. Bag delivery!
it got murkier. It got dirtier. I'm done. I'm gonna get out. Whew. This is my party trip. And that's how you put the ladder I, on the uh, boat. I said All right, guys. Well, we got our limit in what less than an hour. So. It was pretty incredible and, and every single lobster that we caught, we caught using my handmade lobster nets, floridalobsternets.com. Hopefully I got some good footage for you guys. It was very murky, but it was pretty awesome. What do you guys think? I seen them lobsters. They'd see these nets coming and they would just lay down and like it's all over. They just set it on them and get them. It was so easy. It was incredible. No rocks around, just sand. It was so easy. I, I wish everybody gets to experience a crawl at least once in their life. It's it's really really something special. <laughs> I asked my dad yesterday if he wanted to take off work today to come out here and do this. He said, no, I got to work. Then I get a phone call today at like 2 o'clock. I actually get a text message that uh, someone said that the lobsters were walking, which I had already known and I asked my dad yesterday and then at like 3 o'clock we decided to head out here called everybody up. Fisher works for my dad, so he got to come out here real easily and Jed was available and we got it done. Now we got lobster for dinner. I got a little bit different version of that story. What? I remember asking Brooke, are you gonna go see if the lobsters are diving today? Oh, I got editing to do and I got a catch and cook to make tonight. So I don't think so. So I'm like, okay. And uh, it's so easy to get this crew to change their mind. Somebody sent me a text about the crawl. I sent that text to Brooke. I sent that text to Jed. And Fisher was with me. We were finishing up a job. And I would say in 30 minutes, everybody was at my house. The cover was off the boat. And we were, we were rolling. So come check out the cooler. <laughs> There's some big ones in here. You know, it's hard to tell when there was like a giant clump of them, like how legal, like how small the smallest ones were. You always tried to get the biggest one. That's probably why we got some giants because you look at a pile of 12 of them and you're like, well, I just got to get the biggest one. And that's why you end up with some like this. Cause you're like, oh, got to get the biggest one. And there's the biggest one of the group. And that's a nice solid giant Florida lobster. you guys how to clean a lobster. I like to break off the tip of the antenna because this is what you're going to use to clean the lobster tail. And then you're going to take one hand on the head, one hand on the tail, and you're going to spin. You're just going to rotate your hands opposite directions, just like that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take that tip of the antenna that you broke off and you're going to get out the digestive tract, the vein of the lobster, by sticking it in and the um, antennas have backwards facing spines that will grab that vein and pull it right out. So this is obviously what you don't want to eat. Get rid of that. And now you have a lobster tail ready for the kitchen. But we're going to eat nine of them tonight. I'm going to grill them up. You can't get any fresher than that. So I'm going to clean up the rest of them. Then I'm going to meet you guys in the kitchen. All right, guys. So we are in my parents' kitchen and Vic is cutting the lobster tails in half for me. So let me show you. Okay. Take the tip of the knife the base of the tail and I have my palm right here on the base of the knife on the heel 
and I just work my way up. And the way Brookie wants these lobster tonight, we're gonna serve them like this. I go until I get to the other side. So we got a little pocket. So they're split in half, and we're gonna get nice grill marks on this meat right here. And we're gonna set them. Set them right there, just like that. So this right here is lobster blood. It like coagulates and it's this gray stuff. So you want to get that out of there. See it? So we're gonna just grill these lobsters nice and simple. The first thing we're gonna do is hit them with a little olive oil. Oops. Just to try to help this uh, lobster meat from sticking to the grill. It's kind of a lot, but they're gonna cook face down first, and then I'm gonna flip them. So just kind of try to spread that olive oil around in there. We're gonna season them with some salt. Next, pepper. Then garlic powder. And then lastly, some paprika. All right, and these babies are ready for the grill. We got the sun going down. It is a nice, cool, like October day. It feels really nice out here. And it's the perfect time to grill up some lobsters. So let's put these babies. We're gonna go face down first. Let's check them. Scotch. Ooh, look at that color, huh? Just look how beautiful. We are definitely lucky. That's all I can say. All right, it's time to take these babies off. Dinner tonight, Brooke just simply grilled them, taking it back to the classics and you can't go wrong with that. I loved it. Today was a good day. It's fun to be able to just one minute be at work and then the next minute, you convince everybody to go out and you're on the boat, you're lobstering and you go do something like, like a once in a lifetime kind of dive and you catch your limit of lobsters and then the next hour you're cleaning the boat and eating what you just caught. So I think that's a, a what was it today, Tuesday? I think that's a great Tuesday to transition from work to the dinner table this way. So today was a good day. It's wild. Uh, it, I wish it happened more often. Um, it's so crazy to be able to catch everyone's limit in less than an hour. It's kind of disorienting the way the visibility is, but I guess that's just the way it goes. And I mean, you're going down there and picking up two at a time. Uh, definitely my favorite way to catch lobsters. And well done, Brooke, cooking it. Uh, like Victor said, you can't go wrong. Well, like Fisher said, convincing this um, crew to go lobstering is really easy and I, I like that a lot you know that everybody wants to go have that fun we all enjoy the same type of fun and you don't have to twist anybody's arm man you make a couple of texts and whoosh, they're all here I love that all right, and if you guys are wondering where my mom is, she's feeling a little under the weather, so she didn't want to be in the video, but she did eat some lobster for dinner. Again, if you're interested in those nets, I make nets, tickle sticks, I sell gauges, um, I have t-shirts on my website. I really appreciate all the support from everyone who has purchased in the past, and if you're looking to maybe get a gift for someone, Christmas is coming around the corner, it'll be here before you even know it, so floralobsternets.com. I'll have a link in the video description. 
As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. My mom is being quiet in the background saying, make sure you let everyone know lobster season goes until March 31st. So even though lobster season has been open for a while, it still goes on for a while. So don't forget about that. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one.